Preface. The Companion Bible is a new edition of the English Bible. Published originally in six parts, it is now presented in one volume, and the description which follows shows that the work is a self-explanatory Bible designed for the general use of all English readers throughout the world. It has an amount of information, much of it hitherto inaccessible to the ordinary English reader, in its wide margins not to be found in any edition of the AV extant. Its position in these respects is unique. In size and weight, and type and paper, as well as price, it will compare favorably with all existing editions. It is called the Companion Bible because its wide margin is intended to be a companion to the text, and the whole is designed as the companion of all readers of the Bible. The human element is excluded as far as possible so that the reader may realize that the pervading object of the book is not merely to enable him to interpret the Bible, but to make the Bible the interpreter of God's word and will to him. To the same end, this edition is not associated with the name of any man, so that its usefulness may neither be influenced nor limited by any such consideration, but that it may commend itself on its own merits to the whole English-speaking race. It is not a new translation. It is not an amended translation. It is not a commentary. The text. The text is that of the authorized version of 1611 as published by the revisers in their parallel Bible in 1886. There are no alter alterations in the text beyond what can be affected by a variation in the character of the type. Hence, there is nothing that affects the ear when reading it aloud, but only that which meets the eye in order to call attention to the important facts and truths. All ancient readings and new and amended renderings are confined to the margin, which, for this purpose, extends to one half the width of the page. There are no minute English or Greek superior letters to confuse the text or to perplex the reader when searching for the corresponding number or letter in the margin. The types employed in the text. These distinguish all the divine names and titles. See Appendix 4. All pronouns used for the above have their initials indicated by capital letters. The pronouns, etc., emphasized in the original are in special type. Attention is given to the capital and small letters in other cases where they affect interpretation. The words spoken or cited are placed within quotation marks. Where the Hebrew text is written in separate lines, these lines are preserved by being presented in the same way in the present edition. In the book of Psalms, the titles will be printed so as to present the superscriptions and subscriptions as brought to light and demonstrated by Dr. J. W. Thurtle. In the New Testament, all quotations from the Old Testament will also be specially indicated. Proper names with their pronunciation, etc., are included in a special appendix, number 52. The chapters and verses of the authorized version are retained, but spaces are introduced to mark them off into paragraphs, so that the advantages of both verses and paragraphs are retained. These paragraphs are not divided according to the usual paragraph Bibles, but according to the structures, see page 8, which are given in the right-hand margin, while the corresponding index letters are repeated in the left-hand margin by the side of the text with the number of the page where they may be found, so that the subjects of the various paragraphs or members may be seen at a glance, and be intelligently followed. The other figures in the left-hand margin are the BC dates. The margin. A small circle against a word or words in the text calls attention to the same word or words which are repeated in the right-hand margin, with the number of the verse to which they belong. In order to save repetition and economize valuable space in the margin, the words in the text on which a note has already been given in a preceding verse in the same chapter and to which the same note applies are marked with the number of the verse in which the note is given. When these words are referred to, they will be found there will be found no views expressed, but only facts which are incontrovertible and information which is indispensable. Where references are given, these are not merely to parallel passages or to the same English words, which are often as unnecessary as they are misleading, but only to those passages which explain the words in the original and which throw light upon their truth and teaching. 
If amended, an amended rendering is suggested in the margin and several references follow, then the reader knows that he has before him all the occurrences of such words in the original. Where there is an etc. at the end of such references, then he will know that the Hebrew or Greek word in question occurs too many times for all the passages to be given, but that a sufficient number is selected as evidence in favor of such amended rendering. Thus, the reader will be able to judge for himself as to the accuracy of what is suggested, and the Bible becomes its own interpreter. The Marginal Notes 1. In the Old Testament, all the important readings will be given according to Dr. C. D. Ginsburg, Masoretico Critical Text of the Hebrew Bible. In the New Testament, all the important readings will be given according to the evidence of the great textual critics, Greisbach, Lachman, Tischendorf, Tragelis, Aff, Elford, Westcott, and Hort, and the revisor's Greek text. 3. There are no words in the Hebrew or Greek characters to burden or hinder the English reader, but a complete system of transliteration, generally approved by the Oriental scholars, see page X, will enable him to readily put back all such words in the original characters with with ease and accuracy. The Hebrew words are given not in the inflection found in the text, but in the root form in which they will be looked for in lexicons. 4. All important emendations are given. a. Whether required by the above readings. b. Or demanded for the sake of uniformity in translation. c. Or where the current renderings are inadequate and open to amendment, not otherwise, or merely for the sake of giving an alternative. The facts and phenomenon treasured up in the Masera are for the first time presented in connection with the AV. See Appendix 30. 6. All figures of speech are noted, and their bearing on interpretation. These are the Holy Spirit's own markings, calling attention to what is emphatic and worthy of our deepest attention. See Appendix 6. The spiritual significance of numbers is pointed out. See Appendix 10. The principal synonymous words in the original are distinguished, especially for those bearing on sin, atonement, and psychology. 9. The first occurrences of important words and expressions are duly noted. The most recent archaeological discoveries in Assyria, Egypt, etc. are included. 11. Eastern manners and customs are explained as they throw light on the scriptures. 12. The meanings of proper names of persons or places are given where these are suggestive. 13. Money and coins, weights and measures are referred in every case to Appendix 51. 14. Chronology is dealt with on biblical lines which proceed on durations rather than dates. These are adhered, as, adhered to as given in the Bible itself and are not adapted or made to conform to any system. This transforms a dry study into a subject of deepest interest. The various charts and tables are given in Appendix 50. 15. The structures of books are given, and all their parts, which are the surest guide to their interpretation and the strongest proof of their inspiration. See page 8. The marginal notes do not record every possible reading or emendation, as these would only load the pages with a mass of needless matter. Only those new readings and renderings are given which will remove difficulties from the text. Enlighten the eyes, inform the mind, affect the conscience, instruct the head, and influence the life. Several of the above points are, for the first time, placed within the reach of the ordinary English reader. The structures. The, the structures referred to on page 7, make the Companion Bible a unique addition and require a special notice. They give not a mere analysis involved from the text, evolved from the text by human ingenuity, but a symmetrical exhibition of the word itself, which may be discerned by the humblest reader of the sacred text, and seen to be one of the most important evidences of the dis divine inspiration of its words. For these structures constitute a remarkable phenomenon peculiar to divine revelation, and are not found outside it in any other form of known literature. This distinguishing feature is caused by the repetition of subjects which reappear, either in alternation or introversion, or a combination of both in many divers' manners. 
This repetition is called correspondence, which may be by way of similarity or contrast, synthetic and antithetic. The subjects of the various members are indicated by letters, which are quite arbitrary and are used only for convenience. The subject of one member is marked by a letter in Roman type, while the repetition of it is marked by the same letter in italic type. These are always in line, vertically, with one with the other. When the alphabet is exhausted, it is repeated, as often as may be necessary. The structure of the whole book is given at the commencement of each book, and all succeeding structures are, an, are the expansion of this. Each structure is referred back to the page containing the larger member, of which it is an expansion or development. The large members forming a telescopic view of the whole book are thus expanded, divided, and subdivided until chapters and paragraphs, and even verses and sentences are seen to form part of a wondrous whole, giving a microscopic view of its manifold details, and showing forth the fact that while the works of the Lord are great and perfect, the word of the Lord is the greatest of his works, and is perfect also. Psalm 19.7 The Appendixes The Appendixes contain a large amount of information bearing on the various questions raised by the phenomena of the sacred text. Those issued with each of the six volumes pertain principally to such volumes, but in this complete edition they are all placed together at the end. The order of the appendixes is determined for the most part by the order in which the subjects are raised in the text of the Bible. Explanations References While there is no name of a book in the margin, the reference is always to the same book, and all the references in the margin are to the Companion Bible, not to any edition of the AV or RV, Authorized Version or Revised Version. Superior figures in the text always refer to the verse so numbered in the same chapter. The repetition of the same subject in a note is sometimes indicated by its initial capital letter. The figures in the left-hand margin relate to two separate matters. Those in brackets with a P refer to the number of the page on which the corresponding letter and number and member will be found. The number of the page is so indicated the number of the page so indicated holds good until another page number is given. The other figures refer to the BC dates. The transliteration of Hebrew words. With the aid of the following table, any English reader who knows the Hebrew alphabet can put back the English letters into the Hebrew characters by noting the exact equivalence. I'll just leave this up for a little bit so you can pause it. And look at it if you wish. Note at the bottom, the six consonants marked with an asterisk have a dot, degesh, within them when placed at the beginning of a word, but not when they are situated in any other. Any other part of the word except when the letter in question is to be doubled, in which case it is doubled in the English. As an example of the application of the above principles, the following is the first verse in the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew being read right to left. All Hebrew words are given, not in the inflection which occurs in the text, but in the root form which will be looked for in the lexicon. Abbreviations. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this up to um, some of note would be the J-O-N here the Targum of Jonathan Ben Uziel Akaldi or Aramean paraphrase on certain Old Testament books not so ancient or as valuable as that as the Onkelos about 30 BC these are some of the the ancient texts that he pulls from for his footnotes and these will be abbreviated as such in the footnotes. When I read it, I'll probably just say the abbreviation, like John. There's uh, more here, like the Ankh, the Targum of Onkelos, a Chaldee paraphrase of certain Old Testament books, older and more faithful than that of Jonathan, date about 3rd century BC in Babylonia. Sam, 
Samaritan Pentateuch, very ancient, supposed to have come down from the Ten Tribes at least as early as 4th century BC and earlier than the Septuagint. Sept, Septuagint version of the Hebrew Old Testament in Greek, made in Alexandria the 3rd or 2nd century BC, valuable because made from manuscripts older than any now extant. Seer, Syriac version, made from the Hebrew for Christian use before the 4th century AD. Vulg, the Vulgate, or Latin version of the Bible, made by Jerome about close about close of 4th century AD and authorized by the Council of Trent, 1545 to 1563.